Hello, welcome to rockingmove.com. In this session, we discuss about the ADF UI of the Excel system. So, the first step involved in this particular task is, you know, like you have to navigate to Excel, Excel the page. In that, you know, like uh, Excel the menu. In that, you have to click on assets. And in the task, you have to select under the menu transaction. You have a page. You have a link for add a second spreadsheet. So, this particular first action will download a spreadsheet with the name Mass Edition Drop. XLS X. So once you open the spreadsheet, like it will ask you to enter the credentials. You just need to enter the credentials, and like uh, probably this is how it should look like. So initially, you know the here if you here if you observe, I just already inserted two records. That is why it shows the status as go inserted successfully for two records. But generally, it will open up it will open a spreadsheet without having any of these data inserted. Okay. So first thing what you have to do is like always the good practice. If you are not aware of the configured data in the system, the best thing is you have to know what is the what are the mandatory parameters required to create a successful fixed asset. Okay. So here, if you observe, I just created two assets like line one description and line two description. These are the two assets which I created, but it is not yet posted. So creation of asset generally involves two steps. Here, if you observe, whatever the asset which we create using the using this particular spreadsheet. Will just insert the data only in the FN mass edition. It's kind of a staging table. It's not. It's not a base table as such, because whatever data which you which you are uh, which is available in FN mass edition, so it will be available in the new queue. But once it is published, then only you know like uh, the actual the actual consideration of asset in the system starts. Okay. So now in my case, I'll just open the spreadsheet and let us see. You know, like, let's try to enter some data. Here, if you observe, there are some mandatory columns. Apart from your mandatory column, there is a, there are there is, there are set of chances for you need to enter some additional set of values for your columns based on your system configuration. Nothing but like the YTD information or serial number, tag number, which seems may not be mandatory, but in general, but for your requirement, you may need to enter them. So you have to be always validated with your like configuration uh, counterpart. So I'll just enter the third one, line three description. And here, if you observe, like uh, here, if you observe, let us say if you want to select all these things, the preparer is a you know, like an economist person, there's a major category and minor category. These are the categories of categories of your particular uh, asset. So if you're already aware, best thing is you can just simply copy paste from your existing system. Now, here if you observe, just copy paste from my earlier record here. Okay, I'll just enter the data for this one at 3500. And this one I'll just say 10 units. And here, country also, let us say, I just mentioned, I just copy paste like this. So earlier, we used to have a different, uh, in a single XLS file, we used to have a spreadsheet, two different spreadsheets. One is for header level data, and the next level is next sheet for the line level data. But in the latest version of 20C, we just have only one single sheet with all the information for header as well as line nothing. But for a given asset, like you'll have asset number, tag number, serial number, why did you the number of units, price, your particular location category, your asset category, and also, uh, and your particular say segment I mean uh, deposition account category also all all of them are available in a single particular sheet. So now here I'm not entering the deposition expense account, but this is a mandatory one because I was unable to enter because in my system this is not configured properly. It's a demo instance somewhat you know like it got corrupted, so I could not do that one. But for now I'll just ignore this one to just see whether it will whether it, whether you are able to insert the data till the interface level part. Okay. Now I'll just mention on some of the values to like uh, uniquely identify my data. Okay, so I'll just enter serial number, tag number, asset number also. Yeah. So here, if you observe, there are a few things which are not mandatory, but still, I'm just entering. Considering you know, it could be the it could be the requirement. Okay. Yeah. So mostly all are done. Okay. Now, so now what I'll do is this is my interface number, third one. I'll just simply go to the create. Asset addition menu and simply click on submit or post. Both should work. So, this step this step will submit an ESS job with this name post mark. Uh, sorry, prepare, uh, prepare as a transaction data. Okay, so now here is your this. Let's refresh and hopefully you can see this one. Yeah, I know. Right, it's still passing, right? The Excel sheet is passing. Let's see, it will validate all the data first. And then, if it if the data is fine, then it will allow you to insert the data. Nothing but it will allow you to perform the insertion of the data in the interface table, and it will provide you the job name also. Okay. Now, just see here. Yeah, 
this was the one. It's still running, right? Yeah. And yeah, one thing is here if you observe, when you open this particular page of the asset, you know, like uh, it will show you the list of, it will show the information about the ad, asset addition, adjustment, transfer, retirement, all the things here. And you have a different spreadsheet for each functionality. But now in our case, we are trying, we are just uploading asset, nothing but we are adding an asset to the system, right? So just click on refresh. So if the asset addition is added successfully, you may see our asset at this level, like an incomplete asset, or could be an exception asset, or maybe ready to post. So ready to post means that your asset insertion is done perfectly, and you can just simply select the asset, and you can just simply click on post. But now in our case, I'll just click on this incomplete asset because probably it will be, it will be incomplete because I have not entered the depreciation account information. So obviously it will be in an incomplete state. Can you see the line to description one? This is my asset, which is an incomplete set. The reason is because of the incomplete expense account. If the expense account was proper, I would have seen my asset in the like uh, eligible for asset addition. Now, other thing is, if at all, if you want to validate from your back end, finding out you know if you have a proper values in the set of columns, or if you want to generate a report before adding the asset to the your but uh, you know like uh, publishing your asset to the next level. So best thing is always first extract the data and then validate with your functional counterpart. Is this addition is correct or not so that it is ready to post or not the problem is once you post it, it you can't you can't get it back that's that's where the problem is right so that is why always make sure that you mention all the values which are relevant because there are some set of columns which are not mandatory but which is really required for your business because generally what happens is most of the organization asset will come from other system and where you'll be inserting the data into the future right during integration purpose or during conversion purpose what will happen is you may get the data from the third party system and you want to upload the asset every month or maybe during conversion purpose or du during implementation purpose right there could be different scenarios will come across now in my case i just want to see the columns which i inserted which are available in the fa edition table here if you see right the line grid is the one which we just created just now okay so always validate before posting that's the best practice to find out now so this data is available here if the asset was eligible for the posting then you should have be, that should have been available here and like if it was available for ready to posting then you can simply post it and also when you're trying to post it you also need to validate whether for to which to which particular depreciation month you have to post it so there are few considerations you have to consider before posting your asset so i hope you i hope you got the functionality of you know like a mass addition of and uh, you know like adding the asset to the adding asset using ADFDI and also you have some set of seared reports where you can extract the data okay so we'll discuss those other things in like and maybe in the other coming session thank you